হ্যালো এভরা আমরা আজকে কিছুক্ষণ আগে ধ্রুবজ্যোতির বলা পার্টিক্যাল ফিজিক্সের স্ট্যান্ডার্ড মডেলের এক্সপ্লেনেশনগুলো দেখলাম ঠিক আছে সেখানে আমরা বিভিন্ন পার্টিকেল বা পার্টিকেলগুলো নিয়ে দেখলাম যাকে আমরা সাবএটমিক ফেভার্স বলে নাম দিয়েছিলাম সেখানে আমরা ব্যারিয়ন ও দেখব তো এখন সিবিএম বলে একটা স্পেসিফিক কম্প্রেসড ব্যারিয়নিক ম্যাটার নিয়ে একটা গবেষণা চলছে সেটা নিয়ে আমাদের একজন সিনিয়র দাদা রক্তিম মুখার্জি দাদা কিছু পড়াশোনা করে ওনার প্রজেক্টই ছিল তো দাদা সেই সিবিএম নিয়ে তোমাদের এবার কিছু বলবে ওভার টিউ রক্তিম দা হ্যালো এভরিওয়ান আই এম রক্তিম মুখার্জি and it's a pleasure to be here today on the occasion of the third anniversary of juvenile gurukul and uh, so today i'll give a talk on uh, an upcoming experiment uh, uh, in the field of high energy physics and i'll i'll try to keep it short and qualitative i'll also talk a little about uh, some work i did on this experiment so it's titled cbm experiment at fair So first of all what is fair the facility for anti proton and ion research is an accelerator facility uh, which is being built in Darmstadt as an extension of the currently existing GSI research center you know GSI is uh, renowned for discovering some of the heavy nuclei like uh, Darmstadtium borium and hasium so it's a really uh, important research facility and uh, it is also extending its uh, ventures and uh, introducing a more uh, high powered uh, synchrotron in its facility so this fair uh, facility will be housing four different experiments uh, new star cbm panda and appa So let's just look at the facility on the left we can see the blue colored uh, part which uh, which is currently existing and the red portion is uh, yet to be completed all right so uh, we can see that uh, the cis 18 uh, synchrotron that is the schwe ion synchrotron uh, and 18 stands for the uh, amount of magnetic field that is 18 tesla meter uh, the beam from that will be passed on to the cis 100 uh, ring the cis 100 synchrotron and uh, the beam from the cis 100 uh, synchrotron will be split into four parts and uh, provided to the four different experiments so, uh, so uh, we already have Uh, LHC and other accelerators. So, what's so special about this facility? The maximum energy uh, it can reach is only 45 AGEV. A uh, stands for the mass number. So, uh, that's not really much. So, why is it so special? Well, for starters, it can produce really intense beams. It can accelerate really intense beams. and not only uh, can it accelerate anti protons but ions of all naturally occurring elements in the periodic table at least that's what gsi claims and uh, a lot of indian institutions are involved in the project and india is the third most uh, a third largest contributor to this project after germany and russia it ha- it has 3% contributions mostly the da institutes are uh, involved but there are also other universities like university of guwahati uh, uh, who are also participating in this experiment and well uh, the project was initially scheduled to start uh, in 2019 you know a, a cis 300 synchrotron was also planned but for now uh, that has been uh, kept aside because the project has been delayed due to various uh, reasons uh, for starters there were some regulatory restrictions imposed by the german government because uh, this plan involved cutting down a lot of forest which will be again grown afterwards 
and then there was the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, Russia is, uh, you know, the second largest contributor to this project. It, Russia have, uh, are making 18% contributions. So Russia's involvement in war uh, is a big setback for the uh, project. So, I mean, 18%, you can imagine how much of a drawback that is. So now since I've uh, introduced you to FAIR, let me talk about the compressed baryonic matter experiment itself. So why uh, do we need this experiment? So what does LHC do? LHC has such a large ring uh, so uh, with which it uh, accelerates the beam up to very high energy, right? So uh, you can see here the QCD uh, phase diagram. We know in thermodynamics that uh, whenever we have a change in the state of matter, we can represent that uh, using a phase diagram. So similarly, uh, we have a QCD, quantum chromodynamics phase diagram. So what LHC does is explores this uh, phase diagram at uh, a high temperature and low net baryon density region. What CBM aims to do is to explore this region, uh, to explore uh, the quark gluon plasma or the QCD phase diagram at a high net baryon density and comparatively lower temperature region. And why do we do that? So. This will help us to study the equation of state of neutron star core, the dynamics of supernova explosion. You know, the, uh, when we have a 1.5 AGEV collision between gold-gold nuclei, uh, the equation, sta equation of state for that uh, collision is very similar to that of the neutron star core. Uh, this will the CBM experiment will also search for phase transitions, chiral symmetry restoration, and exotic forms of QCD matter. So, what's more special about this experiment? You can see from this diagram the various ongoing as well as planned experiments, and you can see that none of them, none of them even uh, plan to reach close to what CBM, uh, CBM's aim is. It, uh, the CBM experiment aims to reach a collision rate of uh, 10 megahertz. The closest uh, is Hades and BM at the rate N2, which is taking place at Nika in Russia. So that's another way how CBM is so special. Now, we know that scientists are uh, interested in studying the QGP and uh, one of the ways to uh, produce QGP is to collide ions at very high energy, which LHC rig such experiments to. And uh, the other way is to compress matter, compress nuclear matter and uh, produce the quark gluon plasma and that's exactly what CBM aims to do. Now CBM is a fixed target experiment uh, which as you can see from the video that there is a fixed target uh, uh, and the beam from the CIS 100 is directed to this fixed target and this beam is a very intense beam and as I mentio mentioned earlier, it uh, will result in a collision rate of 10 megahertz. You know, the uh, current 5G connection has a data rate of, uh, you know, around uh, 800 Mbps on the mobile uh, and the router routers can provide around 1 Gbps and upwards. But in this experiment, you can uh, imagine how big the data rate is it's one terabyte per second. It's, it's an enormous data rate. And due to such data rate, such high collision rate, it's not possible to separate the signal and background using, you know, hardwares and semiconductors. 
So, and this is where uh, the role of uh, neural network comes into play. This is where my uh, work comes into play. Now, there are various ways to study the QGP and one of the ways is to use uh, low mass vector mesons as the probes uh, because these uh, probes are uh, you know created during the e initial uh, state of the QGP and they uh, represent the deconfi deconfinement uh, phase transition from uh, QGP to hadronic right so so the different vector mesons that can be used are shown in this picture. The Jepsha isn't shown here. Uh, with our setup, the resolution which we have, we will be able to uh, uh, detect the omega and the Jepsha. All right. So now what happens is that these vector mesons also have a very short lifetime, and they decay into dileptrons. So, but. Uh, these dileptrons uh, have a very high energy compared to the other dilepton sources all right so uh, these uh, the energy and various other parameters of these dileptrons are measured and we in turn calculate the invariant mass and transverse momentum of the original particle uh, maybe it, it Omega or Jepshai, so the omega, the invariant mass and transverse momentum of that vector meson. So now here you can see the full CBM uh, experimental setup, and there are various detectors which you can see. The, in the second uh, layer, uh, you can see the rich and the much. The much, uh, which is the muon chamber, is placed in the parking position, and the rich ring imaging Cherenkov counter, uh, it's uh, placed uh, along the beam line. The rich is used to detect the di electrons, all right. And when we want to detect the di muons, we place the rich in parking position and put the di uh, the muon chamber in the beam line. Uh, now, th this muon chamber is being built uh, at VCC Kolkata, uh, which is quite near to my house. And uh, as you can see from the diagram, uh, uh, there are basically four detector stations. The green colored uh, stations are the four detector stations, and the brown colored stations are absorbers. So the absorbers are made of iron and the first two uh, green stations which you can see they are they consist of uh, three layers triplets of uh, gem that is gas electron multiplier and the next two stations um, consist of resistive plate chambers. Now you, you might be thinking that why have we put two different uh, detectors it simply is a matter of uh, cost uh, because you see gem is uh, very sophisticated but also quite expensive and the the amount of noise the amount of background gets absorbed uh, uh, down the beam line so uh, we have used rpcs uh, uh, down the stream because the noise is already getting reduced a lot so now I'll just uh, talk a little bit about my uh, undergraduate dissertation. It was supervised by Dr. Shubankar Ghosh from St. Xavier's and Professor Shubhashish Chattopadhyay from VCC, who also happens to be the deputy spokesperson for the CBM experiment. Now, uh, what was basically done for the project is, uh, see, when you'll have such high, such huge amount of data, uh, you already need to have a trained neural network in place to separate the signal from the background. And for that, uh, what I've done is I've simulated 
an 8 AGEV gold gold collision using Pluto and Yerkium D. Uh, these two are basically event generators which are widely used in the CBM community. So I have uh, obtained I have uh, obtained the signal and background using uh, these frameworks and I have fed them through the neural network. Now you know the uh, size of the signal file is 1.5 MB, all right, and the size of the no noise file is 624.5 uh, MB. So it's almost 400 times uh, more. So you can just imagine how intense the beams are. So you can see the neural network, it consists of uh, uh, seven layers. The first layer, the input layer consists of four neurons, uh, which take the number of hits in the silicon tracking system and the muon chamber and the chi-square of the path in the respective chambers. This layer has been kept inactive the three hidden layers have been uh, given uh, a sigmoid activation function and lastly the output layer you can see is type uh, type is a binary variable uh, which denotes whether the data belongs to signal or background so that that has a linear uh, activation function so before using the simulated data what i've done is I tested the network uh, using two randomly uh, generated uh, Gaussian peaks and uh, you can see from the picture below that uh, it was able to uh, you know separate the signal from from the background quite well and so after uh, putting the simulated data after feeding the simulated data I've obtained a correlation plot. I've also shown the number of hits encountered in the various layers. Now uh, you can see that the signal points have uh, recorded a h much higher number of hits uh, in the muon chamber down the stream as compared to the background points. And if you remember, I <coughs> I had mentioned that the these signal points have a much higher energy compared to the noise and therefore we see such a visualization. Uh, this is the final, uh, on the left you can see the final output of the neural network. We, uh, we can see two distinct peaks, uh, two distinct peaks uh, b meaning that uh, the network was able to separate the background from the signal and uh, ideally what we do in high energy physics is we use graphical cuts to separate the signal from background so that's exactly what I've done uh, I've used graphical cuts at various uh, you know values of output and measured its efficiency and purity and you can see on the right plot and we ideally want the purity and efficiency to be as close as possible and keeping that in mind we obtain a, a result of around 75% which is quite good but again uh, this is at first try and this model can be further improved by tuning uh, before it is actually used for the experiment. So this is the current status of the facility. Uh, on the top right, uh, you can see the CBM cave. It's, it's a very recent picture, about one month back. And uh, the facility is st still under construction. Okay, so that's my time. Thank you.